Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1063. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, there's an answer workbook and a start workbook. The answer has the complete finished solution. The start one is the one you should download and use to follow along. Now, here's what we want to do. We want to pull grades for one student from many sheets into a summary table. So here's our summary table. I want to be able to select a student name and instantly have all of the assignments 1 to 12 come from each one of these sheets. So for Bengali, for whatever student uh, we selected, Bari, we need to get this row here. But then we also need to go to the next sheet, Hindi and Sanskrit and English and math, and get the individual row for each one of those students. So it's a type of lookup. We're looking up this student's name, but on many sheets one row for each sheet, and we need to pull it into this sheet here. All right, let's go over to our Start file, and we're going to start right from the beginning. All right, so I'm going to immediately go over to Names, and we're going to assume that there's a max of 18. And notice I set up the student names from a field name in A3 and then a maximum of 18 rows. But on each successive sheet, I have the student names and the names in the exact same cells. And then on the poll data, that doesn't matter so much. So what we're going to start with is we want to be able to put a variable number of names with a max of 18 here, have all of the names show up here. And then also on our drop down over here, we need a drop down that will pick up any new names. Now, I actually forgot to delete this formula here. We're going to use this trick a bunch. It's called drilling through. So I'm going to show you how to drill through to delete. Because on each sheet, we have a column of formulas. And I want to delete them. So I'm going to click on the first one. Before clicking on the last one, I'm going to hold Shift to highlight all the sheets. That's dangerous, because anything you do now does it to all the sheets. I'm going to highlight those and hit the Delete key. If I forget and start doing something while I'm in drill through mode, you're in trouble. So now I'm going to either right click Ungroup or click on a different sheet. Now we'll assume that all of those scores are there set for this first set of students, and then later we'll test it. All right, so how do we create a dynamic uh, formula? I'm going to come over to this sheet right here, and let's go ahead and create this formula. Oh. But I don't want to have to create the formula on each sheet. So now I'm going to do the opposite of what we just did. I'm going to create a formula on the Bengali sheet and have it drilled through to all the sheets. This is going to work because we have our templates set up the same size on each sheet. So before I click on WPS, I'm holding Shift. Now I've highlighted all of them. All right, in this top cell, I'm going to say If. And now I'm going to click doing in the logical test, I'm going to click over on Names to do a sheet reference and say, if that sheet, you can see Names explanation point A4. If that's equal to double quote, double quote, that's the syntax for empty cell in essence. That's what we're going to look for. It's actually a null text string, a text string with zero length. But that'll work. That test right there equals nothing will test. Right now, it's got something right in the logical test, but now I'm going to type a comma. If it happens to be true, for example, when I copy the formula down to 17, then what do I want in the cell? Double quote, double quote. That's a null text string. That will show nothing. Comma, the value if true, well, I want that name right there. All right, up here you can see our formula, close parentheses, Control Enter. And it went into all every single one of these. But before I go and look, I'm going to click and drag and drag it all the way down. And so now on every sheet, if I click through, I'm still in drill through mode, right? Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on Names. That will also deselect. Now if I test this rad dude, right? So now it should come and it shows up right there. Now that's just for these sheets. We also need to create a dynamic range that will be able to be picked up when we do data validation drop down list. So over to the side, I'm going to build a formula that will create a dynamic range. Right now, the formula will create this. When I add a new name down there, it'll create a range that big. Now, we're going to create it in the cell. Then we're going to copy it, paste it, and go up to Formulas, Name Manager, and paste it into our dialog box so we have a defined name that we can use over on that sheet. All right, you ready? Equals, and I'm going to click on the very top cell. And then I'm going to type a colon and backspace, backspace. By the way, if anyone knows how to 
get that colon into my formula after a cell reference without adding that next cell reference piece, please post a comment. Someone did a while back, but I forgot what it was. Now I'm going to hit F4 to lock that, because I want to create a dynamic range. Right now, the top of a range is always going to start at A4, but I need the rest of this formula to pick up whatever the last cell reference is. And I'm going to look up the last cell reference using the lookup function index. All right, so the array, it's just going to be this whole range right here. F4 to lock it. Now, comma, row number. Well, we need some, we're going to use match, which will give me the relative position. Not really a row number, but row number for index means the row number within that orange range right there. So I'm going to use the match function, which will give me the ordinal position or relative position. Now, I need to look up the last text item. And there's a few ways we can do this. We could put in double quote ZZZ. That is, in essence, bigger a bigger text string than any name. There's no name that's ever going to have ZZZ. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to use the last letter in the Greek alphabet. And there's a keyboard for this. You actually have to hold Alt key down and don't let go of it, and then tap 2, 3, 4. And then let go, and it puts the last letter of the Greek alphabet. I actually learned that from Hammy72 at uh, YouTube. It's a great way to look up the last text item. By the way, if you have my book Control Shift Enter, or you're watching the DVD, or you're watching the series I'm posting at YouTube, I have a whole video. Video number 13 on that DVD will be all about creating dynamic ranges. All right, so we're going to look up this huge last letter in the Greek alphabet within this range right here. F4 to lock it. Now, how does it get the last one? Because the last argument we leave as the first one, which is proximate match. And since that's the default, I'm not going to put it in. Notice the square brackets on the screen tip. That means if you know the default, you don't have to put it in. And I want to do approximate match. That's what will force this big text item to keep looking for some text item bigger than it. And when it can't ever find an item bigger than it, it just takes the last one. Now, the strange thing about match and index right here is if you highlight just the index part, it will obey you. It is going to look up the actual content of the cell. So if I hit the F9 key, it looks up the content. But by putting the index into the context of a cell reference, and that colon is the context of a cell reference, right? Because ranges go from cell reference to cell reference. By putting it in the context of a cell reference, when you hit F9 to evaluate, it's going to go ahead and get the whole range, Control-Z. Now I'm going to just hit Enter. It gives me just the first item. And just to test it, I'm going to put some letters here, come up here, and then F9. And you can see, sure enough, it's picking up the last item. It's creating a dynamic range. I'm going to click Escape. Now I'm going to delete that. Now I'm going to copy this in Edit Mode, Control-C, Enter. And now I want to go up to Name Manager or use the keyboard Control-F3. I'm going to create a new name and call this Student. I'm going to call it Student Names and then come down here. Actually, I'm going to pull this to the side. Highlight this, delete, and then Control V. There's our formula. By the way, that absolute cell reference will turn to a sheet reference in the Name Manager. Uh, create new name dialog box. Click OK. Now, sometimes you've got to be careful. That formula earlier when I tried this, it put double quotes. Sometimes when you put a big formula into the Name box, it put double quotes around it because it's misinterpreting it as text or something. So check it. One way to check it is to click on this Collapse button. And if you see the dancing ants dancing around the correct range, boom, you got it. All right, so I'm going to click Close. There's our dynamic range. Now let's go to the last sheet, Pull Data. And then in this cell right here, B1, Alt D L, Tab L for List. I want to allow a list and the source is going to be, well, wait a second. I forgot my name already, so I'm going to hit the F3 key to paste names and double click my student name. If you just were typing, you type an equal sign in student names, and that will work. Click OK. So now when I use this drop down, the last one is that one. But let's test it. Come over here. So if I come to Pull Data and test it, sure enough, it's picking that up with a dynamic range. All right, so I'm going to delete this right here. All right, now let's go back over to Poll Data. We're going to do a, a formula here. 
And because we have all these sheet names, we need to use some sort of formula element that will create a table range. Now, the, there's a couple things about this. One is the reference here goes from B4 to M16 on the Bengali sheet. Here, the Hindi sheet, it goes, well, from the same range. So one part of the formula, it's going to have to create the same range each time, but with a different sheet reference. We will use the indirect function to create a reference as text, and then con indirect will convert that reference as text to an actual range. The second thing is, when we add a new name, so if I come over here and type something, notice now the range is not from B4 to M16. It's from B4 to M17. So I'm going to come over here and delete this. So what I'd like to do is, because I was thinking in advance, this is the same shape and size, or, or the names are going to be in the same position. I want to actually always look on this sheet, since this is like our source data sheet, and find the last row. That should be 17, 18, 19, right? Because again, part of our formula is going to have to pick up that extra row. Well, it's always in M column, so we don't need to have a dynamic formula like using the address function that creates M17. We can just use an M in our indirect formula and then concatenate or join it to the, the last uh, row that we find here. So I'm going to come over to Pull Data in this cell. I'm doing a simple match function. And I'm going to use my same trick. Double quote and then Alt 234. And there's our last letter of the Greek alphabet. Close parentheses, comma, and the lookup array. Well, remember earlier when we did it, we highlighted from here all the way down here. But that won't work because I want the actual row number 16. So I'm going to start in A1. I'm going to hit F4 up here. And this is that same trick. We want to do approximate match. So I'm leaving that off. Close parentheses and Enter. So there is 16. All right, now we're going to create our range. So for each row, the VLOOKUP function, which is going to look up this name across all these sheets. But the trick to this formula is we are going to use VLOOKUP eventually. But each row has to have a different sheet reference, right? So that's where we're going to use the INDIRECT function. All right, so we have to create a reference as text. Well. Um, we don't have any spaces in any of our sheet names. But just to be cautious, a single apostrophe is used if we ever insert a space for sheet name. So I'm going to add that single apostrophe. Not only that, but I have to put it in double quote. So I hit double quote. Now I'm going to type a single quote and then another double quote. That's just a way of adding a single quote into our text formula. And I'm going to join it to this sheet reference name. And now I need to lock this so when I copy it this way, it's locked. But when I copy it down, it's not locked. So I'm going to hit the F4 key one, two, three times. Lock the column reference, but not the row. Notice when I copy it down, row A4 will move to A5. All right, so now we have that. We need to ampersand that in double quotes. We need a close apostrophe and an explanation. That's the syntax for sheet reference also. Now, it's always going to start in B4. Then we're going to have a colon and an M. And now I'm going to end double quote and join that to this formula that will pick up the last row in our uh, lookup table, in essence. And I'm going to lock that in all directions. All right, close parentheses, Control Enter. It gives me just something ridiculous here. But we will highlight it all the way down. And let's just try. EVS right here and highlight this and hit the F9 key to check it. So it starts at 8978 and goes to 6787. So I'm going to go over to EVS and it looks like it's got 67 and 87 and 89 and 78. We might check it one other time, maybe the very last one. F9. So it looks like at the very end it's got 63, 60, 70. And sure enough, 63, 60, 70. So it looks like it's actually, for each one of these rows, picking a different table. Another way to see that it got the whole table, hey, let's inside the indirect click on the reference text and hit the F9 key. Now remember, that is a text string that represents a reference. 
Control Z. Now, if I put that text string into indirect and hit F9, boom, it's getting the entire table, Control Z. Now I can simply use that table inside of VLOOKUP. Now, what am I looking up? I'm always looking up the student's name. Actually, I think I made a mistake there. Let's escape. The reason why is B, let's go look at our table. B, that would start there. Ah, if we're using VLOOKUP, I need to start in A. So I'm going to come over here. And now I'm going to highlight this whole table here. And in the active cell, I'm going to hit F2 and edit this in edit mode. In the active cell, change the B to A, and then Control-Enter to populate that edited formula into the rest of the cells. All right, now I can do this F2. Edit this formula, control enter, and populate it all the way through. How about V lookup? And then I'm going to look up the student's name, F4 to lock it in all direction, comma, there's the table, comma, and we need a column index number. We need, and it's always going to be the same, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm going to use the columns function. Columns. We could use match here, right? And look up this. Uh, field name at the top, but we don't really need to do that because they're always in the same position and we're extracting the whole record, so I'm going to use columns. That tells me how many columns there are in a reference. I'm sitting in B4, so I'm going to type dollar sign B4, colon B4. What this does is since the B is locked here, when we copy it, that B would be locked. This B will turn to a C. Right now, B to B, how many columns there are? One. When it goes to B to C, that'll be two. B to D, that'll be three. Now, that gives me one to start off. And this is the second column in the table that I want, so I'm going to plus one. Now, finally, comma, we want exact match. So I'm putting a zero, which is equivalent to false. Close parentheses. That is the lookup formula to look up that student's scores from across all these different sheets. So now when I Control Enter to populate all of the formulas, I come to the last cell and check it. It looks like it's working. I could go look up the very last student. Oh, OK, so car on the WPS sheet looks like 64, 43, 57, 64, 43, 57. If I were to look up the first, uh, Let's look up Paul. So on the Bengali, 765357. Looks like it's working. Now, the last little bit is let's go ahead and add a name. You've got to be kidding me. Is this going to work? So, Rad Dude entered the class. Enter. First, let's check. Looks like it's working on each sheet. Now, I'm going to put some dummy data in there just to see if it's working. So, I'm going to select the sheets and drill through. Before clicking on the last sheet, I hold Shift. Now I'm going to very carefully highlight all of Rad Dude, and Rad Dude did really badly. So one Control Enter to put a bunch of dummy data in. All right, let's go to this poll data. Let's click the drop down, scroll all the way down, select Rad Dude, and it Rad Dude, and it looks like it is working. All right, that's a wild series of formulas to pull. For a single student, multiple scores from multiple sheets. All right, we'll see you next trip.